Hello and welcome to another video review. This is Rack for PC. This is a first person shooter by Final Boss Entertainment that has been in development for quite some time actually. And it finally got put out on Steam Early Access some time ago. And is seeing its final release on September 30th, which as I'm making this video is two days from now. Of course, you're going to be seeing this video first on September 29th, so it'll be the day before release. At any rate, if you've seen my, my thoughts on video of the beta of this, you know that I had seen it quite some time ago when Total Biscuit did a video on the alpha version, and I had kind of forgotten it existed up until the developers sent me an email or like, hey, would you like to do a video on this, and what can we do to get that rolling? Well, here we are. It's right before release. We got the full version of the game, and the question becomes, how is it? Is it an improvement over the beta, and does it live up to what it's trying to do, which is a pretty interesting concept, or does something else happen entirely? Well, as far as the presentation goes, it's a step up from the beta, that's for sure. They did add a bunch of finishing touches to a lot of things, but if you've played the fairly recent version of the beta, you're going to see a lot of very familiar things. The map design is pretty much unchanged. The texture work and everything is, again, pretty much unchanged. They did alter some of the animations. For example, the Hyperblade now has a much more exaggerated animation with a lot of camera shake going on with it. It can actually make it kind of hard to hit things sometimes, but you get used to it eventually. And you'll see that the animations are a bit exaggerated. They're fairly smooth and fluid, though. And you'll see a few alterations here and there from the beta. That said, the overall art style still works very well. It's that cell shaded look and it gives the game a pretty unique style going for it. You get this kind of comic book style text going on. In fact, the main menu is styled to look a bit like a comic book, at least in the background anyway. And so they've got this cool style going for it and the art style works very well for this game. That said, I did notice some issues that were on the technical side of things when it came to gibbing. Gibbing, jibbling, whatever you want to call it. The act of basically turning your enemies into bits of goo, effectively. If you get enough of it on screen, it does absolutely tank the frame rate, and that gets actually very annoying. That could just be a an issue in the pre-release version. I don't remember seeing it earlier on in the beta, so it's entirely possible they'll iron, they'll iron that out, but it is an issue, particularly when you're in the middle of a heated gunfight and you've got a lot of enemies bearing down on you all at once, and you find yourself having frame rates that are dropping down to maybe 10 at best. That can get very annoying. Other than that, the game runs fine, it looks great, and the sound design is pretty solid all around. The sound effects themselves, for the most part, are fairly beefy and they fit very well. The enemy sounds can be kind of annoying sometimes, there's a lot of kind of high-pitched squeaking, which gets kind of annoying sometimes, but that just makes it all the better to smash them in the face, so it's a bit of a double-edged sword there. Then of course there's the music, which I honestly don't notice all that much. It's decent, it fits the game a fair bit, but it's just kind of in the background and the sound of the game actually drowns it out quite a lot, but it does fit pretty well. There's not really any voice acting to speak of, so there's nothing to really say there. All the uh, cutscenes are done in text format, so that's worth noting. But overall, the presentation fits very well, and it works very well for this game. But obviously what really matters here are the story and the gameplay. And the story in this is that you play as a guy named Kane, who has to fight off a huge alien invasion because he's the only one who can do it, because the military was disbanded and everything. And so you just go up and you fight the alien horde. And that's kind of it. There's not really a huge amount of storyline here. And the campaign itself is actually only about eight missions. So it's not really that long. And really the only story bits you get are basically at the beginning and end of a level. So what you're really going to be relying on is the gameplay here. Because the story just basically serves as background for what's going on and not much else. So how's the gameplay? Well, it's an extremely fast-paced arcade-style first-person shooter that harkens back to the days of Doom, in particular. You got secret areas, 
you got a lot of enemies being thrown at you. You've got pretty much a handful of weapons. In fact, it's basically only five weapons. You have your Hyperblade, which is your melee weapon that does a huge amount of damage, but flails around on the screen, so it gets a, takes a lot of getting used to. There's the pistol, which is pretty much exactly what you'd expect. The shotgun, again, exactly what you'd expect. The pulsar, which fires energy blasts in an arcing pattern that are in a very rapid fire manner. And the bazooka, which is exactly what you'd expect. It's a rocket launcher. Each of these weapons also has finishing moves, which as you get kills and you chain together those kills and combos and things like that, you will see a bar increase at the bottom of your screen. This is actually something that they added in with the final release version, by the way. So that makes it much, much handier. But as this increase, you can get finishers, which are basically alternate fires. Although the developer described them more as the kind of super moves that you get in fighting games. Regardless, after you chain together a certain amount of kills, you get access to the level 1 finisher, and as you continue to get kills, you can get more and more powerful finishers. And once you get up to the amount that you need, you can hit the uh, right mouse button, which is the alternate fire button, and you can charge up your finisher. This will not only give you a large number of points, yes, there are points in this game, but it will also unleash an extremely powerful attack, which does eat up quite a bit of ammo. Now, for certain weapons, it's better than others. And in certain situations, certain weapons have better finishers than others. For instance, if you're fighting a large group of enemies, you're probably going to want to resort to something like the shotgun finisher, which is a much more powerful, wider spread blast. If you're fighting a, a tightly packed group of enemies, you might want to do something like the pistol finisher, which actually goes straight through enemies. Or perhaps the pulsar finisher, which fires a slow-moving blast that basically takes out anything in his path. Obviously, the higher level the finisher is, the more powerful it's going to be. And the higher level finishers are much harder to get because they require much higher kill chains. So there's incentive to getting as many kills as you possibly can in as quick a manner as you can. And an interesting mechanic is that you can actually reset the timer on getting a new kill in your uh, kill chain by gibbing a corpse. So there's an interesting way of playing this game where it's as fast-paced and frenetic as possible and you're constantly paying attention to your surroundings and you want to get those kill chains as high as possible. And so it ends up being a very interesting experience that's very, very fast-paced and fun. And like I said, it really does harken back to the days of Doom. It doesn't feel quite like something like Doom, but it's very much inspired by it and you can very easily tell that. And it's very clear throughout the level design, throughout the way the game feels in general, that Doom was their primary influence here. Another thing that influenced them greatly was a game called Mega Man, which I hope you've heard of. It's a classic 2D platformer, but what they really drew from that was the boss fights. Where each boss has a certain pattern to its attacks and you have to figure that out and manage to beat the boss. So, there are boss fights basically at the end of each section of game, and so it's basically every two levels. And these bosses each have their own attack patterns and things that you do have to memorize and learn to dodge and figure out how you can actually really beat them down. Some are easier than others, obviously, but suffice to say the bosses provide a refreshing change of pace. And it's especially nice to have them in an FPS after so long where we don't really have them. So, the bosses end up being a great change of pace that are very welcome addition to this game. Even though one or two of them are kind of really cheap. But that's beside the point. So, thus far you've heard me say that basically the game is a very fast-paced, arcade-style FPS that's a lot of fun. But... There are some issues, and these are well worth noting because they can be pretty significant at times. First issue, there's no multiplayer of any kind. At all. 
It's something they said they might do in a sequel if they ever get down to that particular stage. But there's no multiplayer in this thing. No co-op, no versus of any kind. And this is the kind of game that screams out for multiplayer. They are aware that it's something that people want, though. So there is the hope that either they'll be able to add it in later, which I don't know if that's possible, or that in the, the eventual sequel, if they do manage to make a sequel, that there will be multiplayer. The, again, this kind of game just screams out for multiplayer, and it just doesn't have it. What it does have instead to uh, add out new stuff to the game is the editor, the Rack Ed, which I haven't fiddled with. I don't know how easy it is to work with, but suffice to say, they have full Steam Workshop support, and people can make whatever maps they please. In fact, I saw that one person made a uh, recreation of Knee Deep in the Dead, the first episode to the original Doom, and they made that in Rack. So it's entirely possible that this game becomes a big thing for the modding scene. And I hope it does, because that adds to the longevity of the game and would make it a lot more fun. Plus, it's just nice to see something like Knee Deep in the Dead remade in a newer engine. There's also another glaring problem with this game, and that is the way the save system works. Now, ignoring the fact that I eventually hit the problem with the save system breaking entirely, and whenever I tried to load a game, it just crashed the game entirely. I'm just guessing that's a problem with my specific version of the game. If that ever happens in the full release, I'm sure they'll patch it almost immediately. But something screwed up with my particular version of the game. It might have just been my install. But my uh, save system broke entirely, and whenever I tried to load a game, it would just crash. So, ignoring that whole thing, the save system works on checkpoints, which is pretty much unforgivable in a game like this. Because the checkpoints are actually spread out so few and far between that you'll have to replay large swaths of levels in order to get to the part where you were before. And this is also a problem because the levels in this game are actually very, very large. Which is both a good and a bad thing. It is good that the levels are large and expansive and they have a lot of things going on in them. It's bad in that the checkpoint system makes it so you'll have to replay large swaths of these levels, which can take quite a while. So, it's something that I hope they do fix later on. They do have a sort of quick save in there, but... Again, it's something that I really do hope they sort out with a sort of save anywhere option or something like that, because that is a fairly sizable detriment to the game. But all in all, what you have here is a very fast-paced, fun experience. There's not only the single-player campaign, which is admittedly fairly short, but you also have score attack and time attack modes to add some replayability. You have the editor right out there with tons of stuff going on with that already, which is very nice. And you have the developers saying they, they're listening to the community and trying to implement things as they go along. Plus, it's just incredibly refreshing to have an old-school style arcade FPS all over again. After so many years where we just haven't had that. Where you got points, you got one-ups and revives and limited numbers of lives. And expansive level design with secrets and things like that. Sure, the game has problems. But hopefully they'll take this experience on board for the eventual sequel if we ever get one and improve upon the things that this thing didn't do as well. But until then, this game is actually still a very fun experience that I can very easily recommend to FPS fans. I give it a 3.5 out of 5. Thanks for watching.